Hello everybody, welcome back to another video tutorial. Now we have learned the basics of Soundtrap. We know how to use the play and the pause, we know how to add tracks and loops, and we know how to create a beat using the Patterns Beatmaker. Now we're going to be making our first full song using loops. This time we're still going to be using the loop library, but we're going to follow certain guidelines. First, the piece will have an A and a B section. I'm going to explain what that means later. Secondly, the piece will have 64 measures. Thirdly, the piece contains both percussive and melodic loops. And lastly, the piece fades out at the end. So number one, the piece will have an A and a B section. When we listen to music, sometimes there are parts that sound different from one another. And when we have these different sections, we're going to label them differently. Okay, so let's listen to this piece. This is an example of a loops piece that I created. And we can see here, I have two melody loops. Okay, I have one here, which is pink, and we're going to call that A. And then we have another one that's a magenta color, and we're going to call that B. So the form of this piece, the structure of this song is A, B, A, B, and A. Okay, so let's hear this song. Okay, so there it is. That's the whole assignment. Okay, firstly, our piece will have an A and a B section. Check. We have our A, B, A, B, A. It doesn't have to be exactly this formula. You can have A, A, B, A, A, B, A, B, B, A, or sorry, A, A, B, B, Okay, you can do different, different combinations as long as you have two different sections that are labeled A and B. Okay, secondly, this piece will be 64 measures long. Okay, so if you take a look at the top here, we see numbers with tick marks. And these indicate measures. A measure is how we organize music. Okay, so a measure is a unit of time. So we have 64 measures. So as we can see here, 64 measures actually goes all the way 
to number 65. Because if our music was only up to 64, we actually only have 63 bars of measures. To, so in order for us to have 65 measures, we need to loop this until it comes up to the 65th mark. Okay, that's our second criteria. Thirdly, we want our piece to have both percussive and melodic loops. Okay, a melody is when we have music that can be sung or played on an instrument with different notes. Okay, so if I mute this part here, this first loop that you're going to listen to is a melodic loop because we have different notes, some notes that are higher and some that are lower. Let's listen to it. You can hear that some notes are higher and some are lower. That's how we know that is a melody. Now, my lowest loop here, it's called glitched piano kit, is not a melody. It's a percussive element. And we know that because we don't have notes that are higher or lower, and we don't have notes that we can sing. So let's listen to this part. Okay, we don't have any distinct pitches which we can sing, so we call this a percussive element. Okay, so the second criteria, or sorry, the third criteria is that our piece will have both melodic elements and a percussive element. So make sure that when you're choosing your loops, you have both. And lastly, the piece fades out at the end. So as we heard, if we take a look here, starting from measure 61 all the way to 64, we have a fade. And how do we do that? Well, this is how the music was originally. If you go to the very top right hand corner of a loop of any region, you can click on it, hold it, and you can drag it to fade out the music. So I just did that to my melody loop and I'm going to do the same to my percussion loop here. So hover over the top right of the region, you're gonna click and hold and then drag it to wherever you want it to start fading from. So now let's listen just to the last few measures here. Okay, super. So that's your assignment. That's the whole thing. It's very exciting to compose our very first song. Don't forget to click the purple button here to save your work. And that's it. This tutorial is going to be posted on YouTube. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to watch this tutorial. Congrats, you've already done that. Now, there's going to be a link that you need to follow. When you click on this link, it's going to bring up my work here that I've done. Okay, so you can take a look at the example uh, that I created here in this video, and then you can delete what I have and then replace it with your own work. As always, feel free to email me or contact me through Google Classroom. I'd be happy to answer your questions. Take care and have fun.